Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the big rumor of the day being Dolph Ziggler is not going to be leaving WWE. I had made a video earlier in the week uh, talking about the other avenues that might come down with the talk of the town being that Dolph Ziggler uh, would be leaving WWE, but it seems to be the hot rumor of today is that Dolph Ziggler is reportedly re-signed with WWE. Um, there's no uh, timetable about how long he's going to be staying with the company, um, but he has been very vocal about needing a push. And it seems that uh, they've been coming, they've come to terms, and uh, he's going to be staying with them. Honestly, in my opinion, I really think that Dolph Ziggler made the right decision. Um, there's been lots of talk about Dolph Ziggler, you know, going out and trying to do stand-up comedian uh, sort of work. But uh, there's also been a lot of talk about Dolph Ziggler should stick to wrestling. Honestly, in my opinion, I believe he is one of the best wrestlers that WWE has under their roster, always going out and, and making sure that he goes out above and beyond uh, to give everyone the best match uh, that he can give them. If I go back and I think about the uh, interview that Dolph Ziggler did, I believe it was with um, Chris Jericho. Um, I, I believe he also did one with uh, Colt Cabana, um, talking about how he got into wrestling and, uh, you know, basically all that came down to it. I remember, uh, I believe it was on The Art of Wrestling, Dolph Ziggler talked and told the story about how he went to, for a WWE tryout, and when he went to his tryout, he also went with Bobby Lashley. And I remember him thinking that maybe when it came down to it, uh, they would hire him because they would have to do a round of WWE trivia, and maybe Ziggler would be able to beat Lashley in the trivia game. Um, I, I watched my buddy Ravi's video, Assault and Battery 777, and he made a, a, a thing in there. And everybody makes videos on here, and everybody has their opinions, and everybody's opinions matter. Um, but um, honestly, in his video, he said that he hoped Dolph Ziggler would leave WWE and go to Ring of Honor and become this huge star. And the one thing that I took from that video was... No one goes to Ring of Honor to go there and try to become a big star. People go to Ring of Honor to try and get themselves over, try and showcase their best style of matches, so that way they would get picked up by hopefully WWE, and if WWE doesn't want them, hopefully they would get signed by TNA. If you think about the names that have been in Ring of Honor, um, I mean, mainly it's only the Briscoes and Roderick Strong uh, that are still around. Everybody else there is sort of emerging stars. Uh, either that or they're like Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards who left to go to uh, TNA. Um, and then, of course, you know, all of the all-stars that have all gone through, uh, you know, the WWE's uh, developmental. And now they're on the main roster, you know, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, all guys like this. Most guys that leave um, WWE and they go to like a Ring of Honor or TNA, this is like, you know, the, the guys going to the old folks retirement home. I remember when uh, Drew Galloway, um, got uh, released from TNA. He basically, I'm sorry, when Drew Galloway got released from WWE, he said that he was going to go out, he was going to work hard uh, to, to you know, reestablish himself. That way WWE would realize that they had made a mistake and that he would re-sign with WWE because that was the place that he wanted to be. And it seemed like within six months, you know, Drew Galloway had signed with TNA. And everybody knows that, uh, Basically, going to TNA after WWE is almost like giving yourself um, the rest of your career off. This is where you're going to have to, you know, make sure that you stay for as long as you can stay there because, uh, you know, TNA just doesn't, you know, produce stars to the point where WWE wants them to be there. I know that Samoa Joe is there right now. I think he's just sort of like a one of the a one in a million kind of guy. Um, that, you know, he's just become a, a star, like he's a name in the business, but he's a guy that's never been in WWE, so people want to see this, so it's sort of like building up a dream match, um, you know, with so many people that, that, that could be there, um, you know, and Samoa Joe came in, uh, you know, he did the face-to-face -face with Kevin Owens, which led to them having the big match on NXT and him sell selling loads of t-shirts, um, and, and there's, there's lots of other matches that you could want to see Samoa Joe in uh, once he gets there. Um, but uh, we'll have to see what happens with Ziggler. I, I wish him the best. Um, you know, you know, Ziggler. You know, you know, finally seemed like he climbed to the top of the uh, WWE when he won the Money in the Bank. He cashed in against Alberto Del Rio. Obviously, at that time, WWE had bigger plans. But uh, Jack Swagger's um, arrest leading up to WrestleMania 29 really threw those off. It was supposed to be that Swagger was going to beat. Um, Del Rio uh, to become a two-time world heavyweight champion, and then they would battle back and forth um, Del Rio and Swagger to try and build up um, Alberto Del Rio as a huge, um, you know, um, Mexican-American hero, and um, people just fell short on Swagger because they caught wind of the uh, 
um, the arrest via TMZ, and they just knew that nothing was going to come of this. I think, you know, maybe WWE, if they would have taken away that match from Swagger, maybe um, it would have helped out what was going on better at that time because, you know, um, it was a tag team match for Ziggler. It was Ziggler and Big E. Um, they went up against, I believe, Team Hell No. Um, and then the next night, it was uh, Ziggler cashing in at Money in the Bank. A big, huge moment for the, all the wrestling fans. You know, everybody loved Ziggler, but he was a heel at the time. But it was almost like he came off like a baby face. Cashed in, became the champion. Next thing you know, he has a concussion. And um, they're taking the belt away from him. And they're almost, you know, penalizing him. And we've seen him, you know... And get to the point where every time he wins the Intercontinental Championship, we're like, all right, here it comes. This is what Ziggler's going to be doing. And, you know, he's going to bring some legit uh, legitimacy to the Intercontinental Championship. And next thing he knew, he loses it to Luke Harper in a, in a boring match on Monday Night Raw that nobody cares about to, to build up the Survivor Series. And everybody's like, well, I guess Ziggler's in the shithouse again. And then the Survivor Series comes and, and Ziggler gets the pin. And it seems like they're really making him be the guy because, you know, the, the pay-per-view's going off and you have Ziggler standing on the stage. But then all of a sudden, you know, Cena comes out and gives him a big hug. And it's almost like, you know, the, it was Team Cena, yes. But it's almost like you're giving the shine to Cena at the end of the show. But at least Ziggler got that you know moment of shine there. And then he got fired on Monday Night Raw by the Authority when they came back. And he was off TV for three weeks. They have him return right before the Royal Rumble. But, uh, you know, who cares? There was a small little rumor about Ziggler winning the Rumble. But it didn't happen. But um, they need to get Ziggler back on track. He's got a lot of fans. Um, people love this guy. They love to watch him work. And we have to see what Ziggler's going to be doing in the foreseeable future in the WWE.